Hey farm and garden friends, if you've been following along, this is the fourth video in the series and by far my favorite way to maximize space in the market garden. If you haven't been following along, check out that playlist and make sure you hit the subscribe button. But we are talking about companion planting, otherwise called intercropping or interplanting. They all mean the same darn thing. It's just planting different vegetables, different crops down the same bed that will grow well together. So today I'm going to take you along, show you a few examples of what we do here on the farm, and see if you can guess my top three favorite vegetables to use as a companion plant. And stick around to the end, and I will share my secret to making this whole process extremely simple. So let's check it out. Now in this first bed, this is a good example. We've got our pickling cucumbers. They're gonna grow up this trellis line, but we also have some bunching onions that we direct seeded at the same time, and those are just about ready to be pulled out. And what you can't see is we already harvested a batch of uh, radishes that we direct seeded down the middle of this, these staggered two rows of cucumbers, and that worked great. Uh, they're a 30-day crop, so we were able to grow them and harvest them while these cucumbers were just getting started. So those worked very well as a companion. So there are a ton of benefits to companion planting, but today we want to focus on utilizing the space in our bed so we can maximize the productivity because we are working on limited space. You know, we're not, we're not working a five or 10 acre field. So all of our beds here are 30 inches wide by 50 feet long. And right here is a great example. So you can see our pepper plants. Now typically you may just run one row or two staggered row of peppers down the bed but there really is no reason not to use the other parts of that bed. So you can see while my pepper plants are growing, we have some more bunching onions down here, which are looking great. And those will come out in the next week or two. And we've got some parsnips growing. So those are ready to come out as well. Pretty soon it will be just the pepper plants. And I may go ahead and do another round of uh, bunching onions or radishes or something along those lines um, down the edge so I can utilize that space again more or less flipping half of the bed. All right, so this bed is a great example. This is, originally it's what we're calling our sweet pepper bed. Okay, we've got pepper plants running all the way down the middle. But as companion plants, we interplanted celery, which is doing beautiful, and bunching onions all the way down. And they're all looking very healthy and really, really utilizing the space in the bed. As we come down here, you can see we planted some beets, and those are looking really good. Those are about ready to come out as well. Just a beautiful example of inner planting. Another example is our kohlrabi, and we direct seeded a row of spinach, actually two rows of spinach, down the sides. And those did really well. We've actually pulled most of the spinach out, used it, just left a little bit left there to harvest. Those two worked very well together as well. Let's see what else we have. So we have carrots that went in with eggplants. So these eggplants will stay in a lot longer than the carrots will. So another good use of space. I staggered. I did two rows of eggplants, planting them 24 inches apart, and then staggered them. So there's essentially an eggplant every foot heading down the bed, but the carrots going down the middle are doing just beautiful. Another great example. All right, so another good example is 
the carrots interplanted with the melons. And here we had radishes that we have already harvested that we had planted the same time we direct seeded the melons, knowing again that they would come out before we needed the space for the melon plants. So that's working fantastic. Let's see what else we got. All right, guys, so this is another one of my favorites. First time using the pole bean structure, so I'm pretty geeked about that. Pole, the beans are growing. They're about ready to start running up this. But if you look down the middle here, we have got some more radishes growing. Delectable little buggers. So, as you can see, I love planting radishes wherever I can because they're a quick 30-day crop. We can kind of have them most of the time throughout the season. But that, they're growing really, really well with the beans. So we've got our broccoli growing. That's doing well. You can see our carrots are doing well in here as well. So I've got to wait for those to get a little bit bigger before I can come through and weed. If I was to come through and try to weed all this stuff out right now, I'd pull the baby carrots up. So, so I've just got to deal with that in the meantime. But the carrots are doing well. As well as... See our spinach. So that spinach coming up all the way down through there. I should be able to get in here this week and get this weeded out. Now that my spinach is probably big enough. Wanna jump over here and see. We've got cucumbers. These are slicer cucumbers that will be climbing up. This 50 foot bed but you can see we have radishes <laughs> we've got some more radishes planted on that side and on this side you can see them we've got some baby carrots we've got carrots down one side radishes down the other on the edge of the cucumbers and those are those are a great fit all right guys so i think you can see just how much space would be wasted if we were just have peppers running down the middle of that bed. I see it all the time and it's really not necessary. Celery, peppers, onions, all doing fantastic, growing three times the amount of food. So no reason not to interplant and it really does not have to be that difficult. Now, just like I promised, my top three, I'll give you my top four favorite vegetables to interplant or companion plant with. And that will be radishes, bunching onions, carrots, and lettuce. All right guys, so like I promised, my secret to keeping this whole companion planting thing simple is just memorize all the different varieties of vegetables and variables and what could go together. <laughs> Not really. My secret to keeping all this simple is this right here. It's Google, guys. It's literally this simple. When I'm out planting, say, I'm going to do kohlrabi, and I know that's what I want in that bed. While I'm out planting kohlrabi, I will literally pull this out. Is spinach a good companion plant for kohlrabi? According to West Coast Seeds, spinach, a good companion for brassicas, eggplants, leeks, lettuce, peas, radish, and strawberries particularly. Don't plant spinach near potatoes. That's the secret, guys. So kohlrabi's a brassica, spinach is a great companion for it. I do the same thing with everything that I plant. I don't, I don't memorize any of it. Now obviously you do it enough, you're gonna learn what goes with what. But honestly, that's how I keep it simple so I don't have to waste any time thinking about it. When I'm out here planting something, I pull my phone out and I literally ask it. So by far, this is my absolute favorite way to maximize space in the market garden around the homestead and that is through companion planting, intercropping, interplanting, whatever term you want to use. Mashing different varieties together in the same bed. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. If you haven't checked out the other videos in the series, go ahead and check them out and I'll see you guys in the next one. Yeah!